Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about my most surprising reads of 2021. Let's get started. This is my first year doing this kind of video. I've always done like best of, worst of, but I've never really done like the surprising and like the disappointing or whatever. But this year I have a better understanding, I think. My most surprising is only about five books. It's not that big, it's not that long, but these books were pleasantly surprising and they either exceeded my expectations or in one case they did and yet didn't. I don't know, it's a bit crazy. Without further ado, let's start talking about these books, okay? I do want to quickly just say something to you. I don't know, I feel as though like I've been thinking about this a lot and I don't really know like how to put it, you know what I mean? Like it's been on my mind, I've been thinking about it. I cannot continue to just like not say anything, you know? I need to say it. You may know that in previous videos, previous times we've spoken, I've said that you're like literally perfect, that you're literally fucking stunning, that you're literally iconic and that you're a bad bitch. You need to hear it again, okay? Let's not, let's not fucking pretend bitch. The 2021 is over. It's over. See ya. Wouldn't want to fucking be ya. You know what I mean? You're like a Pokemon, you know? You're like, okay, cool, 2021, you were like Eevee. Now you're like fucking Vulpix, bitch. The end of 2022, you're gonna be a Nine Tails. Is that the same line of Pokemon? I'm not sure. Either way, you are evolving, bitch, constantly, every single day. And every single day, every single week, every single fucking month, you get fucking better. You're like wine. The more time goes on, the better you get, okay? And I need you to fucking remember that. I need you to walk into every single fucking day. I need you to wake up in the morning, you know, be like, oh, what? And then be like, oh, that's right. I'm a bad bitch and I'm literally going to get better every single day. I'm gonna work harder. I'm gonna continue to look fucking sexy as fuck because you are. You're gonna fucking kill all of them with kindness. 2022, I think, is going to be a really, really good year for all of us. And that and that we're all gonna realize our fucking worth. We're gonna see the amount of effort and time we put into things, and we are going to be gentle with ourselves. And you're going to remember, bitch. Okay? You're going to remember that you are stunning, gorgeous, beautiful, eloquent, exquisite, flawless person you're going to remember that and you're never gonna fucking forget it okay anyway i just had to let you know it's been on my mind so continue to do the lord's work continue to be the fucking baddest bitch and i will continue to be here just like on the sidelines like yes whoa you know like cheering you on because i know that you you fucking got this okay Let's talk about my most surprising books. The first book I want to talk about is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. I was expecting with this novel to hate it. I had heard from a few people on booktube that it was um, what the French would call la chite, you know, like le trash. Went into it being like, okay, cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hate the fuck out of this. This is gonna be awful. And I'm ready to have that experience, you know? And I went into it and I finished it being pleasantly surprised. It was pleasantly okay. The writing was pretty nice. The characters were pretty okay. The ending, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it at all. And in that way, it surprised me. This novel is about a girl who puts an ad on uh, Craigslist. She gets a response and she starts to have this back and forth with this person and they get closer and closer. The relationship gets more intimate and they begin to ask each other of more and more things. And it very slowly, but also very quickly escalates into horror. The things have gotten worse isn't necessarily like the best book I've ever read. I don't, I'm not like in love with it. I don't think about it every single day and like think like, oh my god, what a crazy experience. Like that's not my experience at all. Did I hate it? No. Did I like it? Yeah. It was okay. It was pretty good. I didn't hate the experience uh, and that was surprising to me because I expected to, to like not like it. That's the first book. 
The second book that I want to talk about that surprised me in 2021 is one that isn't necessarily a positive sort of surprise. It's more of a mixture of positive and negative surprise. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm talking about 12 Nights at the Rotter House by, I honestly forget the author's name. This novel is so hyped up. So many people absolutely love it, like love it. When I went into it, I was expecting to also just like instantly love it, instantly be like, yes, this is the maze thing. That wasn't my experience. To be honest, the experience of reading the book was much more like boring to me. Like I, I didn't really care that much. What's surprising about it though, is that the ending of the book saved it a little bit, just like a little bit. Now, in case you don't know, Rotter House is about this guy who wants to write like the next big paranormal book. So he and his friend decide to go to this house called the Rotter House and stay there for however many days so that he can write this novel about his experience and it'll be like the next Amityville. Things begin to get weird. This is the conundrum of this book. I don't know how to feel about it. Most of the book is in my opinion a slog. There were so many things in the book as well that I did not notice or see. Take for instance the the relationship between the main character and his friend. It was meant to be like tense and like they were meant to be like you know just rehashing their relationship but I honestly didn't even notice it and maybe that's just me. Maybe I like fully didn't read it. Maybe I like skipped that part or something but I like did not notice that their relationship was like frayed or that there was like some kind of tension until like literally like the end of the book. Reading the book, you have to understand the complex relationship between these two characters. You have to be invested in it. And because I wasn't, I think it affected the way that the book felt to me which was boring. I felt the book was boring. And then the book surprised me with the ending because the ending is so well done and so captivating that I was like, oh fuck, like, what do I, what do I do now? Because I've been reading this whole book thinking that this has been trash. And now that, and now the book is suddenly getting good. Like, what do I do? So I don't really know like how to justify it on this list other than saying that like the ending surprised me. It surprised me in like a good way because it was interesting and it kind of helped the book in my opinion. But in another sense, it surprised me with how bad the rest of the book was like the the rest of the book is so uh, and then the ending is just mwah. i don't know maybe i shouldn't have added it to this list i don't know <laughs> i don't recommend the book to be honest because i don't think it's worth it but i also think that i'm kind of like the minority in that sense of most people seem to really enjoy it and really fuck with it honestly before reading it i would read a bunch of reviews to see what to see what the consensus is so you can make your own decision or even just go into a blind you know follow your heart do what makes you happy baby it was a surprising surprising book surprising experience let's talk about house of hollow i had so many people saying like you need to read it it's so good you're gonna love it it's gonna be the best thing that's ever happened to you so when i did actually kind of read it i was surprised to find that it wasn't as good as i wanted it to be this could also go into my disappointing reads to be honest at the same time there were other parts of the book that pleasantly surprised me it's kind of similar to rotter house where i have very like mixed feelings about it in case you don't know house of hollow is about these sisters when they're very young they go missing and then like a few days later they come back and they're completely different and as they grow older they become sort of famous they've all kind of gone their separate ways until one of the sisters goes missing and the other two have to go find her and figure all these secrets about like what happened things that are kept secret things that are being kept in the dark etc etc i was pleasantly surprised with how much detail went into the body horror you don't really see that a lot in YA even in YA horror you don't really see it so I was happy to see that um, I was happy to see the more grotesque side of things there was like you know like this whole like YA thing where like they have to make everything like seem beautiful and poetic so it was like oh my god roses are blooming out of my skin and it's just it's just like ooh. I was like oh my god it's gross but then also it's like kind of beautiful or whatever which 
like whatever that's like a cliche it's like a cliche but whatever it's fine it's it's fine it's, i was pleasantly surprised with how far the book was going within its like horror aspects but then what surprised me in terms of it being like not good was just like how cliche it was as well from an outer perspective the book would seem pretty gritty right it seemed pretty like not conventionally young adults right considering as well that like it's about like these girls who went missing these girls whose like lives are like shrouded in mystery and darkness apparently and their father like killed himself and like blah 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 it's it's a dark novel so tell me why the author was like let's add in all of these like cliche ya things like a romance that nobody fucking asked for why 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 even bother just just like don't just don't at all why just why i don't know maybe this book should have also been in the disappointments <laughs> but either way i wasn't super impressed with the book but at the same time i was happy with some aspects of it some i don't know anyway let's move on up next let's talk about halloween fiend by cv hunt going into this novel i expected it to be meh. I had tried to read The October Boys by Adam Millard and it was such a slog, such a bore, and I really didn't like it like at all. In my head, Halloween fiction wasn't going great for me, like it wasn't my favorite thing, but this book proved to be surprisingly really, really fucking good. Like really fucking good. This is a short novella about a town where there is some kind of monster that people call the Halloween fiend. Each and every single night, this Halloween fiend goes door to door. I think they give the monster like hamsters or something. And the story is focusing on one specific guy. I really, really, really fucked with this book. It's super fucking creepy. The plot is genuinely interesting. Kind of has a The Lottery by Shirley Jackson kind of vibe, which I live for because that's like one of my favorite short stories. Characters are genuinely interesting. Not even just like likable, but like interesting. And then the ending of the book. The ending of the book. The ending genuinely makes your heart fall out of your asshole. And I genuinely think that the book could do really, really well outside of Halloween. Like you could read this like in the summer and I think it would still be a lot of fun. Like you don't need to read it at Halloween. Genuinely, such an interesting book so good so spooky so scary and so like it surprised me with how good it was to be honest like i was not expecting to like it or even like really like think that much of it and it surprised me with how with how much i actually like cared first of all but then actually genuinely thought about it afterwards and liked it especially the ending the ending the last book that I want us to talk about is Come Closer by Sarah Gran. This is similar to Halloween Fiend in that I didn't expect to like it. A little backstory. I started reading Come Closer, I think in 2020. Uh, I started reading it and I never finished it. I got about halfway through the novella and I thought, this is so boring. Nothing is really happening. I'm just gonna like, you know, put it aside and like never finish it. Cause I'm like not interested. For some reason in 2021, I was like, you know what? Let me just revisit this, this book. I was wrong. I was genuinely, genuinely incorrect and wrong about the book. The book, Surpri the book surprised me with how good it was at the end. <laughs> I'm sure most of you have read it. I'm sure most of you know what I'm talking about, but it has this like slow creeping horror thing that I love, I love. For those of you who don't know, Come Closer is about this girl who is getting possessed by a demon. The whole novella is basically her experience in the first person with, with getting possessed, with like dealing with the demon that's inside of her. What can I, what can I say about this? It's horrifying. I'm genuinely baffled by my initial response. I don't understand what I was thinking. The novella is genuinely terrifying. Genuinely like made me feel as though I should be worried about getting possessed. Like I literally like finished reading the book and I was like, what can I do to not get possessed? Like. 
that that was like a genuine thought in my head because it was so scary and it was so compelling and, and like convincing that I oh my gosh and like what like what the fuck was I thinking what the fuck was I thinking the first time I was like um it's boo like what I really really ended up enjoying the book like a lot I take back ever feeling or saying that it's boring I take that back I don't think it's boring I think I think it's a slow burn that at the end of the novel um traps you similarly to suffer the children which I'll talk about in, like in other videos it's similar to that where like the whole book the author is sort of like coaxing you into feeling comfort you know feeling like okay it's like not that big of a deal it's like you know she's like she's like hinting at all these horrible things but they're not necessarily in your face so you're okay with it and then at the end of the novel you are trapped there is nowhere for you to fucking go but to like see through this character's eyes of like this horrific horrific situation it's so good i love a good slow burn i'm realizing that i realized that in 2021 my friends my family my familia thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video sorry it's not like as long as my other ones i genuinely didn't know what books to put in this video um and i didn't have that many to be honest but i'm glad that we had this time together let me know down below if you've read any of these books what you thought of them i would love to know don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit we talk about creepy shit we talk about things of getting worse since we last spoke and shit thank you so much for watching i hope you have a wonderful day and i will see you in my next one which will be my most disappointing books of 2021 and that list is long <laughs> there's like there's like at least like eight books on that list so and you know how i love to get fired up and like i love how much i love to just like talk shit so it's gonna be a good one don't miss it anyway i will see you in that video bye